Okay, so this is a quick video, kind of a breakdown of the four major areas of system hardening. Now, in any particular system, whether you're talking about an Android phone or a Linux web server or a Windows client computer, there's going to be other specific things, but but the four big things that are going to be everywhere uh, are what I'm going to talk about today. So the first step to hardening a system is changing the defaults, right? So looking at the default user accounts um, and their user account names, obviously the biggest example is for a million years, Windows had that guest account that was enabled by default, which was a huge problem because nobody even remembered to go in and turn it off. Uh, but also, if you install MySQL server, there's a default MySQL user. Um, Kali Linux just changed this like a, like a couple of months ago, so the default account is no longer root. When you install Kali Linux, it asks you to give the account a name, uh, which is a very good thing. So changing defaults is actually becoming less of an issue because more and more of these systems won't let you, they won't give you a default or they'll generate a unique default for you. If you think about, you know, your Wi-Fi at home, uh, now it has, you know, it comes with that little sticker with that monstrous password on it. There's a good reason for that because everybody else was using those defaults. Um, you know, we were playing around with uh, Shodan in the, uh, the cybersecurity class the other day, and students were telling me they were logging into routers all over the world with admin admin, right? The default user account information. So change the defaults. Relatedly, change the default passwords, right? If, if the default password is admin, that has to go right away. So changing defaults, incredibly important. Um, also changing the defaults for files and databases and places. Again, with MySQL, when you first install it, there is a default database in there. Uh, that, well, I don't think there is anymore, but there was for many, many years. That's a really bad thing because everybody knows that and anybody could access it. Files that are in default places, uh, particularly on web servers. You know, I was just checking out out of curiosity I, you know, fuzzed a, a web server of a, of a guy whose uh, content I consume, and wouldn't you know it, slash wp-admin is right there, right where you would expect it to be instead of being moved somewhere else. So anybody can find that and then, boom, start brute forcing uh, logins to get access to that web server. So... <clears throat> Files, databases, and directories, places for web servers in particular, those need to be not in default places, right? Those need to be moved around. First step of hardening. Uh, the second step is going to be updating and installing your antivirus if that's an option on your system. Not everything has an antivirus. You know, if you have a smart fridge, there's no antivirus for that. But obviously, if you have a PC or, a, uh, or, or um, most phones now, most mobile devices have some kind of antivirus. Um, that is a more complicated thing than it used to be. A lot of antivirus is much smarter now, and it might be taking information across your whole network. So I might need to have something installed on my, uh, my web server that shares information with what's installed on my client PCs. And that's, those are very different systems. But it's really important as one of your steps of hardening that you get something installed in there, preferably something that works across your whole network. In Linux, if we think about things like AppArmor and SE Linux, those are a type of antivirus, although they aren't you know, strictly antivirus. They do a lot of other security measures as well. But they're monitoring what applications are doing and limiting their access to install other things. Right? Um, block and remove unnecessary programs, another really important uh, part of hardening your systems. We want to reduce our attack vector. An example I use is the, the recent Joker vulnerability found on like 25 different Android apps. So maybe you installed some game on your phone three years ago. Somebody finds this vulnerability later on. You haven't played it, but it's still just sitting there that's a potential attack vector. It's just sitting there. So anything you're not actively using, you don't actively need, need must be removed. Uh, because it reduces the need for the final step, which is updating, right? Uh, and you can block things, one, through whitelists, so that I, I can have apps that it, I can uh, have it set up so that only apps on the whitelist are allowed to run, or only apps on the whitelist are allowed to do things like save to the, the drive, 
I can also, you know, by having a strict firewall policy, I'm blocking that attack vector as well. And the last step of hardening is updating your software, right? Updating your, your Windows systems, updating all your applications. And again, the more I've removed that's unnecessary, the less I need to update. But everything has to be updated. Every time you get an update, you know, for Adobe Reader, there's a reason for that. They're fixing some vulnerability. Somebody found a, a, a way to take advantage of a vulnerability. They realized a threat. Uh, and if you don't install the update, you are vulnerable to that threat out there. Uh, so make sure you're installing your updates uh, and also be mindful of the sunsets of your technology. Not as big a problem with Linux, uh, but you know, Windows 7 is supposed to sunset in 2020. Uh, now they keep saying that and they keep pushing it back, but that means that the manufacturer is no longer going to provide updates. They're no longer going to fix things. So if there are security flaws found after 2020, you're just vulnerable. There's no way to update. There's no way to patch that. That's a really big problem. So uh, there's also all the miscellaneous kind of specific stuff, you know, password policies, permissions, but that's going to be really dependent upon whether you have a Linux box or a Windows box, whether it's a client computer or a server or whatever. Uh, but these four steps, no matter what it is, these four steps apply.